Okay, so we are going to talk about the midpoint and distance formula. This should be somewhat of a review with the little uh, geometrical uh, ideas and vocabulary thrown into here. Uh, but this is something you should have learned last year a little bit. So we're going to just go straight through the notes. Uh, our vocabulary that we're looking at today that might be a different from last year is midpoint, of course, uh, segment bisector, and segment addition postulate. Uh, the midpoint is a point that divides a segment into two segments. Okay, so it divides a one long segment, as in AC here, and then B is the midpoint and divides it into two segments, AB and BC. So that's what a midpoint is. Again, pretty self-explanatory. I think we all are pretty familiar with that. Uh, next, we have the segment addition postulate. That's parts of a segment add together to equal the complete segment. So in this case here, the segment addition postulate will tell us that AB plus BC will equal AC, okay? So you might want to write that down on your notes, AB plus BC equals AC. <clears throat> okay, and then segment bisector, that's a point or a line or a plane, any of those three things that intersects a midpoint. I'm sorry, intersects at a midpoint, excuse me. Oh, I do want to go back one step, I'm sorry. Um, I want to go back one step and show you right here, this little symbol right here, that means is congruent or equal to. And so here, these are equal sides. So not only does a midpoint divide into two segments, it divides into two equal segment, segments. Excuse me, I should have made that very clear from the beginning. But again, that's review from last year, okay? <clears throat> and again, a segment bisector, if you didn't catch it, point, line, or plane that intersects at a midpoint. Again, this right here is a segment, okay? that bisects this or it meets at the midpoint. So here's our midpoint, E is our midpoint, but now we have a segment, okay, that would be a segment bisector, okay, because both of these are 5.1 centimeters. Okay, let's go ahead and move up a little bit. So now based on our information that we're given here, it says GH, okay, bisects, and that should be segment GH, segment GH bisects segment JK at G. If GK okay, is 7 centimeters, okay, so GK is 7, JG must be 7 because JK is 14. Now again, if this is not 7, if GK is not 7 or JG is not 7, then it is no longer a segment bisector because it wouldn't be meeting at the midpoint. But because we know that GK is 7, this is 7, and we know that JK, the whole segment, is 14, we can deduct or conclude that JG must be 7 either because this plus this must equal 14. Since both of these are 7, we know G is the midpoint, and we know GH bisects JK because it creates a midpoint. Okay? Let's throw a little bit of algebra into the mix here. These lines indicate, those two lines indicate that they are congruent sides, that they are equal, that this segment here is equal to this segment here. If they were not equal, they would have a different or an additional dash mark through that segment. So basically, this segment here that's represented by 5x minus 3 is equal to this segment here that's represented by 11 minus 2x. So we can solve for x by setting them equal to each other. So we have 5x minus 3. Based on our drawing, we know that it equals to 11 minus 2x because this right here is our midpoint creating two congruent segments. As I continue to solve, I'm going to go ahead and add 2x to both sides. That gives me 7x minus 3 equals 11. Then I'm going to subtract, I'm sorry, add 3 to both sides. That gives me 7x equals 14. And that leaves me with x equals 2. Take a just second and pause the video for a minute and tell me what the lengths of each segment are. Now that you know what x is, you can tell me the exact lengths of the segment. Okay, if you said the length of the segment was 7 units, then you would be correct because 5 times 2 is 10. Plugging it in back here using substitution. 5 times 2 is 10 minus 3 is 7. Here, 11 minus 2 times 2. 2 times 2 is 4. 11 minus 4 is 7. Okay. Now let's start talking about some midpoint. 
Okay, midpoint is the average of the two endpoint coordinates. Okay, again, average, if you remember, is you take the number of things that you have to average, add them together, and divide by how many you have. In this case, if we're talking about two endpoint coordinates, that means we have two x's and two y's. We add those together and divide each one of those by two. So our midpoint formula is a sense x1 plus x sub 2 divided by 2 and y1 plus y sub 2 divided by 2. That'll give us our exact coordinates for our endpoint. I'm oh, sorry, our midpoint, excuse me. So here, if b is 1, if b is located at 1, negative 3, 1 over, negative 3 down, and c is located at 4 over, 2 up, you plug that into the equation here, you have your, your x values, which would be 1 plus 4, okay, is 5 over 2. So that's how we get 5 halves. Take your y values, negative 3 plus 2, okay, negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1 over 2. That's how you get negative 1 half. Uh, rhetorical question, obviously, because you're watching the video, but does it matter which order we put the x's and the y's in? It gives us a specific order of x1 and x2 and y1 and y2, but because we're adding, and addition is commutative and associative for that matter, it does not matter what order we put it in. So if we screw that up, we're going to be okay. Okay, moving on. So now we're looking at ray BA. Okay, I know this is a ray because B is my endpoint, and I have another point A, and it goes continually in this direction here. Okay. If I want to find the midpoint, I have an endpoint here. I can find the midpoint of A. All I have to do is plug in if I have, I'm excuse me, sorry, different problem. I forgot we're doing a different problem here. If I want to find the, the coordinates of the other endpoint, I can plug in what I know the midpoint to be to find the coordinates of this endpoint here. So if I use my formula, x1 plus x2 equals, I'm um, divided by 2, and y1 plus y2 divided by 2, I can plug in what I know. In this case, I have one endpoint, which is 2, plus an unknown value. Again, that's unknown, so I'm going to leave it as x, divided by 2, equals my x value of my midpoint, which is 10. So I just solve for x here. So multiply both sides by 2 to get rid of the fraction. That eliminates this, leaving me with 2 plus x equals 20. And then divide both sides. I'm sorry, subtract 2 from both sides in order to get your 18. So subtract 2 from both sides, 20 minus 2 is 18. So my x value at this endpoint here is 18. So let's find the y value. Same concept here. I know one x value is, I'm sorry, one y value is 2, so I plug that in, plus my unknown y value for that point there, divided by 2, because that's part of the formula, equals the y value of the midpoint, which is 6. Again, I multiply by the denominator, which happens to be 2 here. That eliminates this 2, leaving me with 2 plus y. Make sure you multiply this side by 2 as well, equals 12. Subtract 2 from both sides. 12 minus 2 is 10, so my y is 10. So this point right here, and we can call it just for namesake purposes, point C, is equal to, is at point 18 over and 10 up. Okay? And last but not least, let's talk about our distance formula. Our distance formula is right here. Again, should be reviewed from last year. Distance equals the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared, okay? Really quick question here, or a really quick note I want to point out here, is last year some of my students got wise to the fact that if you square root a square, you're just left with the, the number underneath the radical, the radicand, okay? So somebody said to me last year, well, if I square root this, can I just take these squares off? No, because these are two, order of operation tells us we've got to do this first and this first, which changes the whole dynamic of our problem, okay? So, what we want to do here is, is and again, sorry, one other thing here is, is does it matter what order my x square, y, or my x, x2, x1 is in? It does matter only because 
it's subtraction now. Subtraction is not commutative, okay? So because I'm subtracting, I've got to make sure these are in the right order. Same thing with the y2 minus y1. All right, so take, let's take a look here. If we go over here and we take a look at our points, we need to look, we're trying to find the distance between A and D, okay? And again, this is kind of a visual representation of what we're doing, okay? Using that Pythagorean theorem in order to find our actual distance, this is kind of that visual representation. But what we're going to do is we're going to actually fill in these points. So on your notes, fill in these blank points. Our A value is located over at 1, 2, negative 3, so negative 3. And our y value for a is 1, 2. So in our first blanks, in the parentheses, put negative 3 and positive 2. Our b point, because we're looking for the distance between a and b, is located at 1, uh, 1 over. So that's where the minus 1 goes. And it's minus 1 because that minus is in the formula. And our y value is 1, 2, 3, 4 down. So minus negative 4. Now I notice a lot of you, especially coming up from the middle schools, are keeping your double uh, signage. Go ahead and eliminate that double signage as possible and turn that into a positive uh, if you can. Okay. So then I have negative 3 minus 1 is negative 4 squared. Okay. Here I have 2 plus 4 is 6 squared. So 4 squared is 16. And 6 squared is 36. So 16 plus 36 is 52. So now I have the square root of 52. Okay? And that is going to be my distance. And I could, I could probably I'll look at rationalizing. If you ever have the opportunity to rationalize, I'm sorry, I keep rational, say rationalizing, simplifying the radical, then you would simplify the radical. Okay? And again, this right here, what this is telling you is, is this is your y values, the change in y values, okay, over the change in x values, which is how you find slope, but now you're finding a distance, and that's why you're doing a squared plus b squared equals c squared, but in order to find c squared, you've got to square root all of that. So again, it's proof, and we can talk more about this in class if you want to tomorrow. But that's pretty much it. That's pretty much the nuts and bolts of midpoint and distance. Um, Again, if you want to get a head start on your classwork slash homework, it's already on Blackboard. Uh, otherwise, come in ready to go tomorrow, and we will get started. And again, the quicker we grade and the quicker we get started, the, more, the less work you have to do at home. All right, if you have any questions, come see me in the morning at tutoring. And again, don't ever forget, I'm here after school every day from 4 to 5 and pass. Have a great evening.